Hello, this is Darlene with Friends of Fairview. We're a nonprofit organization dedicated to preserving Fairview Cemetery right here in New Albany, Indiana, and preserving the stories and the legacies of the people that are buried right here. And the story I want to share with you today is unfortunately not a happy story nor an easy one to tell. And that is the story of Enoch West. But before I get into his story, let me introduce you. Right here he is. Here's Enoch. He was born February 14, 1846, and he died November 4th, 1885. So look at the detail on his headstone. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Looks like the hand holding a scroll. So the sad thing about Enoch's story is that Enoch chose to end his own life on November 4, 1885, at the age of 39. So before we get into his story, I want to share with you my philosophy of genealogy, because in stories like this, it's going to be very important to remember a few things before we go any further. I have researched hundreds of people, not just my own family, but hundreds of people, local history, um, people that lived hundreds of years ago and all of that from the local area here in New Albany um, for various different historical organizations and things that I'm involved in. And I have developed a philosophy towards genealogy which has served me well and I wanna share with that with you now before we proceed with Enoch's story. And that is this. To approach people's lives with reverence, respect, and dignity. To treat the details of their stories with compassion and humility. To refrain from judging their choices and to have space for their humanity. So now that you've heard all of these, you can see how these would serve me in helping me to, uh, to just know how to best tell Enoch's story. Um, to tell it with compassion, humility, space for his humanity and the struggle and the mental anguish that he was obviously in at the time that he decided to end his life. Um, not wanting to sensationalize the story of suicide, right? And make that a sensational romantical type thing. Not wanting to um, capitalize or sensationalize his anguish, right? Re just having respect for that struggle that he was in at the moment. So the best way to proceed with Enoch's story is to do it in a very gentle way. I'm going to intentionally leave out certain details that are not necessary for the point of this video and the telling of his story. So most of the stories and the videos we create when we're telling someone's story, we're telling the details. But I think in this case, it's just not appropriate. I think it's more appropriate to leave some of those just off out of the story, um, out of the telling of the tale, because they aren't necessary to the point of the story, to the point of this video. So I'll give you a little bit of facts about Enoch and a little bit about his story that I feel is appropriate to share. And then from there, we're going to talk about suicide itself. September is Suicide Prevention Month, and it just seemed appropriate to tell Enoch's story now and to share warning signs. If we, uh, if we are feeling uh, these warning signs or notice these warning signs in ourselves, or if we notice them in another person, to share what those are so we can recognize them and to offer help. Who can we call? What can we do? Where can we turn? if we are in a space where we need to reach out for help in this area. So I will be sharing that information here shortly. But first for Enoch, I wanna tell you, before I tell you the sad story, the sad part, let's talk about what was beautiful about Enoch's life. He was a clerk for a grocer for more than a decade. For more than a decade, he worked for the same grocer in the same grocery store. And his employer, the grocer, had nothing but good to say about him. He had no complaints about Enoch's work. He said he was dependable and reliable and he did a great job. He was very good with the customers that would come in. Um, so no, no problems there. 
So then he was an upstanding member of his Oddfellows Lodge, the Independent Order of the Oddfellows here in New Albany. That was in operation at the time. He was also an upstanding member of his Masonic Lodge here in New Albany as well at the time. And so um, no complaints there, right? He was actually well liked, even though he was known to be said to be quiet, kept to himself, uh, was more of a melancholy um, temperament that he had. So it just makes you wonder why, right? Well, we may never know exactly why. We can always speculate, you know, we can look for things that may have led to that. There's always warning signs if somebody knows to look for them, but this was right, 1885. Um, mental health wasn't really a thing that people focused on. Usually they would institutionalize anybody that showed any signs of mental struggle. Right? It was just throw them in the asylum or the sanatorium or whatever um, and not help them be able to move through whatever it was they were struggling with and then return to just living life, right? You just to put them away. That was, the, that was the usual response. So his father and two of his siblings did struggle with some mental health issues as well. And so I'm sure that maybe that was a factor in, in Enoch's own decision to take his life. Um, perhaps, we don't know. We aren't certain, certain if that is the case. We can always speculate, as I said, but we can never know we're not in, we were not in Enoch's shoes to know what was running through his mind. There's another clue. Um, one, uh, an acquaintance, he was sitting outside the store the night that he did uh, commit suicide, sitting outside the shop the grocery grocery store um, one evening, the evening of the suicide. And an acquaintance walked by. Um, it was a female acquaintance walked by and was just kind of chatting with him a little bit. And she wished him a good night. And he made some kind of comment of, um, you know, it just gets gloomy at night, uh, at night he, that he gets, glo it's gloomy for him at night. Um, and he dreads the nighttime. And so that was the last person to see him alive. This acquaintance who walked by and chatted with him for a few minutes and he made comments of that, of that nature to that person. So it gives us a little window into um, maybe that there was some mental struggle there that he could have used some support with. But again, in 1885, there just wasn't the support. I'm grateful that today, nowadays, today, mental health isn't becoming the stigma that it was before. That there, it's becoming um, more, there's more awareness of the need to help people with mental health. There's more awareness of the fact that it's normal to struggle from time to time. We all do. We all have had moments in our life where we've struggled mentally, emotionally with something, right? A death divorce, whatever it might be, um, childhood, not everybody has, um, was born into a supportive childhood situation, right? And in supportive family. And so there was a lot of things to overcome in that situation for people, for many people, they have that story. So we're all coming from a different place, but I can guarantee you that all of us somewhere in our life have struggled somewhere emotionally and mentally in some way. And so the stigma is beginning to disappear from mental illness, mental health, right? Or the mental, the mental emotional struggles. The stigma is disappearing and that is a good thing. And more and more help is out there now and that is a good thing. So now I just wanna go over the warning signs. If you or someone you know are just in a very difficult, struggling place right now, um, these are what to watch out for and I will have the hotline that you can call for help that will flash across your screen uh, shortly so stay tuned for that but here are the warning signs you should be able to see them right now on the screen and they are talking about wanting to die great guilt or shame being a burden to others feeling empty hopeless trapped or having no reason to live, feeling extremely sad, more anxious and agitated or full of rage, feeling unbearable emotional or physical pain, 
If you notice changing behavior, such as making a plan or researching ways to die, with a drawing, withdrawing from friends, family, saying goodbye, giving away important items, or making a will. If you notice taking dangerous risks, such as driving extremely fast, displaying extreme mood swings, eating or sleeping more or less, using drugs or alcohol more often. If these warning signs apply to you or someone that you know, get the help as soon as possible, particularly if the behavior is new or has increased recently. The numbers to call 988 is the suicide crisis lifeline. Call or text 988. You can chat at 988lifeline.org and that is the official website, 988lifeline.org. The crisis text line is to text hello to 741-741. In 1885, when Enoch made his choice, he didn't have all of this help. He didn't have the lifelines. He didn't have the suicide crisis lifeline, the 988. He couldn't text or call that. He had the people who knew him couldn't text and call that. He didn't have anybody paying attention to the warning signs. They didn't have those warning signs to know, to look at, to figure out, right? to know that Enoch was struggling and somebody needed to reach out to help him. It wasn't there in 1885. In 1885, most of the people that were exhibiting any type of mental struggle, emotional mental struggle, were considered insane and were put in asylums, many of them. There wasn't the help that there is now, the counseling, the therapy, the awareness about the need for mental health wasn't there in 1885 to help Enoch. So I told Enoch that he was gonna help me today, that he, his story was gonna help me help somebody else make a different choice. Because we do live in a time where we do have help. We do live in a time where the lifeline is available. You can call their tax 988 and you can get help. If you see someone that is struggling, someone you know is struggling with any of those warning signs, there's a 988 you can call and get help. There's also local resources. This is the national hotline, lifeline, but there are local resources in your area too. Here in New Albany, we have LifeSpring. You'll see the number right there. This is a resource you can call if you live in New Albany, Indiana, LifeSpring. But wherever you live, there are other resources. But if you don't know of any, 988 is your best bet and they can put you in touch with people that can help in the area where you live. So I guess I just want to just close this out with this. If you are yourself struggling with thoughts of wanting to end your life, if those thoughts have been running through your mind, I just want you to rethink that for a minute. Just stop for a second and just really think about that choice. Because do you see where Enoch is right here? That's what that choice did for Enoch. It put him right here on November 4th, 1885, when he ended his life, this is what happened. He's speaking, he's speaking to you to think about it a little bit longer before you make that choice, right? Think about it a little bit longer before you make that choice. You are an unrepeatable experience in this, all of time and space. Not just in this world, in this lifetime right now, but all of time and space. You will never happen again. Do you get that? Never happen again. 
You are unrepeatable, unreplaceable. If you choose to leave, you leave a hole in the world behind you that nobody can fill because there's only one you. So just know that you are loved. Maybe you don't feel like it, but that's because you need to learn how to love yourself. And there are people that can help you learn to do that. You can learn to do that. You can learn to love yourself and you can learn to receive love from the people who would love to give it to you. There is compassion and genuine love and care waiting for you to help you in your time right now. What you're experiencing now is a temporary moment, a temporary time. And if you seek the help of someone, call 988, a person that you trust, a counselor, whoever it is, someone that you trust that can help you tell somebody, that can help you get the help you need if you can't do it for yourself. And try again, try again the next day, try again tomorrow and the day after that. And then the day after that, just wake up and do it again. Just try it again, right? Don't leave. Please stay because tomorrow needs you. Thank you.